Liesl, today's episode of the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast is brought to the good people by Budget Blinds of Lee Summit. I love Budget Blinds of Lee Summit. How can you not? They're pretty legit. It's a great business, and it's even greater people. So local people running that business, doing great things, and and it's the home for Enlightened Style Shades. Enlightened Style Shades. I just like saying that. And it does sound, it sounds, sounds kind of big time. It does. Sounds very big time. And look, they've got, they don't just do shades. Like almost all of your interior decorating needs, they're there. They can help you get them. I even have pillows. I have pillows on my couch from Budget Blinds. Hmm. I didn't know you had pillows. Yeah. That's throw pillows. amazing. I know. And who doesn't love throw pillows? Everybody loves really. throw pillows. And supporting a local business that gives back to the community is always a win. Always a win. So when you're ready to make your home the best home it can be, go visit our friends at Budget Blinds of Lee Summit. Tell them Liesl and Nick sent you. Hello and welcome back to the Lee Summit Town Hall Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Parker. With me as always, my co-host, Liesl Hayes. Hello, Lee Summit. Oh, there you go. I know. There I think you. it's official. I'm sorry. I know you're, you don't like it, but it's going to be my, my signature. You're officially the co-host. I know. Thank you. I appreciate that. The trial that. period's over. Oh, that's great news. We took a vote and everybody said, It yeah, only she... took six months, huh? Yeah, we took a vote. Everybody uh -huh. said, yeah, she's pretty okay, but way better than you, Nick. Mm, so Good, you know. good. I'm glad the, uh, <laughs> I was going to say the viewers, the listeners, you know, they've spoken. They actually do like me, well, is what the, you're saying. the audience of four has spoken. Okay, good, and, good. And they say, yes, <laughs> uh, she is better than you and she can stay. Perfect, so, perfect. Yeah, Love that. Love that. We're having fun. We are having fun. We're, we're having, having fun. a lot of fun. And yeah. we're going to have way more fun today because Megan Mercer's here. Yes. Look at you introducing the new guest. We've I got know. My my new buddy. We've become friends over the last yes. several months. My new buddy, Megan Mercer. Hello. A uh, uh, One of the original cast members of an awesome improv troupe. Yes. Pretty funny. Awesome. And you're doing a lot of other stuff in the community too, but I really wanted to, 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 to have you come on. And talk about pretty funny because I think it's it's cool. Like it's just a thing not everybody thinks about that we have this this group of people around here that are doing yes. doing improv. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so glad to have been introduced. I feel like I couldn't say anything or make noises until <laughs> my name was said. Listen, most I'm of what we do here. when we talk is just make noises. I know. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. <laughs> the curtain that has been is revealed. True. Yes. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. I. Oh gosh. I am so excited to have brought improv to Lee Summit. Not that I'm the one who did it. I will say our improv, our group, pretty funny. Um, so we have been performing since I think we decided it was 07 when we got together. Wow. We have through, been through marriages, babies, divorces, uh, moves across the country. I, it, Everything that has happened in life has Are those happened. all bits or just things that have happened to your cast members? Things that have happened to our <laughs> cast members, which do become bits then, yes. So we always say that it's, we are, it's not making fun of life, but we are laughing at the things that life throws at us. So come laugh with us. Okay. That's not. Did I ever tell you that I knew her <laughs> with Pretty Funny before I ever knew her as like Megan Mercer in this community? No. Yeah. Okay. So I, I remember, love this story. Okay. So I had been going to Pretty Funny for probably like four or five years. It's like a Christmas tradition yes. that um, my neighbor like got us all into and we, we just started going every year. It was like our holiday tradition together. And I remember being at Bridge Space and you walked out and I think you were with Joel Wilson and mm -hmm. you were having like a pretty serious business meeting or something. <laughs> and then you walk out and I'm like, after the show, <laughs> I keep staring at her and I'm like, Hmm, she looks really familiar. And I'm like, She's the comic and pretty funny. I totally fangirled her. I, so that was <laughs> like the thought. She yelled that out loud. You're the one from Pretty Funny. And for two moments, that was that was my glorifying moment of fame. I was like, I am celebrity. You were totally And then I went back to normal person. <laughs> and then I text like both my friends and I'm like, guess who I got to meet today? I know so you're funny. jealous. Yeah. Texted both your friends. That's I think that's the funniest part of the story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it must be what you know Jason Sudeikis feels like when he gets recognized. Totally, do we need, absolutely. Do we need to put stars on on the, oh, in the pavement when we do the new uh, yes. development downtown? Have some walk, I think a walk that's of a fame. That's a really good idea. Those should be a walk of fame, and in the back is the walk of shame. 
Well, that's, so that's, a lot of shame. That's in the alley, that's where I'll be. Is yes. in the, in the yes. alley. So, Mr. Mayor, if you're listening, we've got a new idea. New idea. New It'll idea. cost you nothing and <laughs> <Right>. everything. <laughs> <laughs> nothing and everything. And we have the first two nominees, uh, Megan Mercer for the Walk of Fame right. and, and myself for the Walk of Shame. I'll, I'll love just it. stand somewhere in the middle. <laughs> yes. I'll like alternate between both locations, if that's that works for y'all. The independent stars. Yes. I commit to neither the front or the back. Yes. Yeah. It's dependent. It's mood dependent on where I'm going to yes. be. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. Okay. So how did, how did you all meet? Like, so, yeah, this, we all actually started doing improv at comedy city, mm -hmm. which was at the time we started at, was it third and Charlotte? And then we moved to fifth and Delaware and through different moves. And then of course, because of pandemic shutting things down, um, and it had changed from Comedy City to Comedy Sports. No longer exists in Kansas City, at least for the time being. Maybe there's a spark that will come back. There is improv that happens. Um, but Right, because I think that's yeah. a thing that not a lot of people know about. I mean, no. I even growing up, there were different comedy improv places and yes. things going on in Kansas City. But it's not. it's a small group that either attend or, or yes. perform as a part of it. So I just shocked me when you said 2007. I'm like, really? I know we we were really one of now it's it's more independent groups. We have to find a space. We have to promote ourselves. Comedy sports, Comedy City was more commercial, so they had their own space. They had a kitchen. They had a liquor license. They could do their own adult beverages. Uh, so and they had regular shows: Thursday night, two on Friday, um, three on Saturday, a Sunday show. Um, Wednesdays were were rehearsals. You know, so we every Wednesday I'd go down. I moved to Kansas City direct from graduating college, found Comedy City, auditioned and joined, um, and that's where my first group of friends was from, was Comedy City. They're the ones that threw me my uh, wedding shower when I got married. That's I had awesome. Friends oh, I love that threw that. me a baby shower. They're like, ooh, babies. What, what happens with those? I don't know. Can I still get on stage? You know. <laughs> and I have pictures of myself on stage, pregnant, doing improv. So in utero, Liam was... On the stage Did he inherit the, the uh, comedy genes? He is funny, and he is witty, but he will say, I'm not like you, Mom. I don't want to be in front of people. And I'm like, that's all right. You, you're still hilarious, as I'm choking. <laughs> but, yeah, no, he is so funny. He's funny. Okay, is, is his dad the same way? Curtis is, is funny. Oh, he's funny? Okay. I, yes, he is a different kind of humor, and we... So we talk in movie quotes, and that's how Nick and I have connected so well. He also gets my movie <laughs> references. I love it. So, okay, what are like the top movie references that the two of you share? Well, for a, for for a project that we've been working on together, there's been a lot of sports movie references. Yes, uh, but really, it's just anything. I think sometimes we try to out obscure each other. Yes, like like what can we pull that's and then sit there and wait and see if they recognize. Did you know that what I just said was not my own, but from a movie? And she's really good about just sliding into a conversation. <laughs> okay, like randomly right. and you're so like. It'll be like, she'll say something and then our other partner will say something and then it'll click in my head. I'm like, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, like, that was good. And that's, the, that's just I don't the validation it. I need. Yep, absolutely. It's nice, thank you. We can move forward. I think we started awarding each other points at one point. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Just back and forth. It's like almost like red car, yellow car. Is there a different point assignment for like if it's an obscure movie, if it's a well-known movie, or is it just like everybody gets the same? I think it's like the, the gymnastic judges in the Olympics. It just depends on our mood. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's me. I like it. You just get a little people. stronger now. Yep. But um, so getting together. So we all started at Comedy City, Comedy Sports, and Pearl uh, McDonald was the one who actually got us all together. We were at a Halloween party at my house, and she says, hey, what, what do you think if we get some ladies together and do an all lady improv show? I'm like, yeah, I'm always up. At one point, I was in like five different improv groups. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Curtis works nights. Didn't have a baby. What else am I gonna do? So improv every night. And I said, yeah, why not add a lady troupe on there? Let's do it. So she had a group of women that she approached. We did a show um, for the Jewish Community Center in Overland Park. It went really well, and we decided to do more. And the rest is history. We just have kept going. So it's fun. What's the response been the last few years that you, you've done some shows here in Lee Summit? Yes. How's that response been? Because it, it's it's new, I would say, to this crowd. It is new. It's, it's interesting because our crowd, we know everybody in the seats. 
we we could introduce everybody. It's like we're having a party in our basement and everybody we know is there. I might not know everybody, but somebody on stage knows everybody. We could, so it's very warm. People love coming to Lee Summit. They've loved having parking, somewhere to go eat, somewhere to go drink afterwards. It's very comfortable. The It's just different where you are coming from what would be a, a quote unquote theater somewhere else where it's a typical theater or it's, you know, it's just different. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, she, all of them had a show at Westport Coffee House pretty regularly. That yes. was where we were every year, right? Correct. But yes. the Stanley, it was really nice to experience, like, it was a larger venue. Like you yes. said, there was a well, lot more parking. Too. Yeah, yeah, it was very fancy. And it was like, the bar was great. The whole experience was great. It was we have no we had no backstage mm -hmm. but i'm oh, also i didn't even think about yes. that for you so i'm a purist oh sure always, you do you've got the balcony the balcony <laughs> Over, right overlooking shut this. the window so nobody can see us i need to do a little uh, change of costume yeah i don't like costumes i don't like props you know because that's part of the show of improv people are you really making this up yeah i don't i asked you for the suggestion and then we didn't go anywhere we just sat here and started something so but We've known each other for so long. If somebody comes out with a certain character or a vibe, uh, we can play off that with each other really well. Um, or if it doesn't, somebody comes on and you can tell, you feel, maybe they're not un, they're unsure about something or something doesn't hit the way you can tell they thought it should, so you can either help bring something else in. We play a lot with not saving each other. There's a lot of trust. There's a lot of love on stage with us. We support each other. How much comes from, because I think everybody thinks of improv, they think of the, we, we're going to take the props from the audience, right? Right. How much of those those skits and bits come from those prompts or just, you guys just let it go? Like you, you use it to start and then it just happens. A lot of it is we use it to start and we let it happen. And what shapes the scene is the game itself. So there are different games that you play. So you have your outline. Mm -hmm. um, you know at some point I'm going to pick up a piece of paper. That will be the line that I say in the scene. Other people have to react. I can only say the line. I let somebody else react to it. I can't say the line and then say something else that I want to say to justify the line. So there are rules of the game, but we just let it go. That's fun. And that's fun. It's kind of, it's scary at first, but when you're with people that you really trust and you know really well, it's a great ride. How did you, how did you stumble <laughs> into this? I, and I, and I know just from talking to you that you're, you've got a little bit of a theater background yes. growing up, but I mean, how do you, how do you stumble into, into this kind of thing <laughs> and end up yes. being in a group like this that just becomes your, your team? My, well, when you graduate with a theater degree and you're not immediately asked to be on Saturday Night Live, you look for the next <laughs> Oh, so thing. your degree is actually theater. My degree is in theater. I went to Stevens College in Columbia, which brought nice. me to Missouri. Yeah. Um, met my uh, husband at a um, college park party in Columbia. So I was smitten. I moved here right after uh, graduating and looked up auditions. And I saw Comedy City. I thought, well, that sounds like fun. Let's audition. <laughs> Went in. And I was like, do you need a monologue? Do you want me to sing? What should I do for you? And they're like, no, we're just going to have you do something that we're going to throw at you. I don't have to memorize anything. I was in. This is you great. You were like, this is fantastic. Coming from doing Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Did you know all along that, that, that comedy was kind of your wheelhouse? It's comfortable for me I don't know that I realized how comfortable it was I did a lot of drama and comedy in college uh, we did do some improv in college we had a little group we went to the coffee houses and would do like 10 p.m 11 p.m shows um, but I I love it I love making people laugh and not in a weird way like laugh at this but I'm more of a glasses half full kind of girl and if I can choose, it'll be half full of whiskey, so let's have a good time. <laughs> um, but it's more enjoyable to have a positive, fun outlook than it is to be burdened by the things that life can throw at you. You know, let's sit in sadness for a minute, but let's move forward and enjoy the day. When was the last time you were on stage for a drama? Oh, my gosh, for a drama? I did do a, a scene. It's probably been when I first moved here. So I moved here in 99, and I got hooked up with some directing students at UMKC and they had me do a scene for one of their classes 
and it was in the round, so it was felt very vulnerable, which means yeah, your I bet. audience all around you. Um, but I love it too. Yes, look at my back acting. Wait, my do back you remember so what good. was the scene? Do you remember and who was the character? Oh gosh, it was a something to do with medical because I was some sort of doctor with a white coat. I didn't have a big part. I remember thinking I should have a bigger part. No. <laughs> well, of course, that's Megan should awesome. always have a yeah. bigger part. Yes, yes, you absolutely should have. No, uh, that's but that's the last. I mean, I think the major drama piece I remember from high school was um, we d- doing Shakespeare things. Um, a Midsummer Night's Dream. I was Helena. That was great. Such a good part. Got to wear a corset. Yeah. So, but the lines, the memorization. Well, it's hard enough memorizing lines and then memorizing Shakespeare lines. You're just like, this is not even how we speak. I can't imagine, like, that part of thinking about acting. Yes. The part about memorizing entire yes. scripts. Just, yeah. I mean, that stresses me. I don't know how people do that. You have to memorize it so well that it's the line is second nature and just comes mm-hmm. out so that you can truly be in the moment with your actors on stage. And whatever they give you, because their emotion could be slightly askew than the night before. And you have to react honestly mm-hmm. to that emotion. And I think the nicest thing, here's the difference between Shakespeare and like just basically anything that's not Shakespeare is you can kind of improv a little bit on a line, right? Mm-hmm. It's like if you in general are communicating what the line is, you're okay, right? But with Shakespeare, you're like, you're butchering. You know, right. Poetry, right? Like you just can't, you can't do that. It's we, not a thing. We lost the iambic. What's yeah, happening? We yeah. lost the iambic. <laughs> what's happening? Get I it mean, together. Maybe we should we should uh, do an entire show sometime just an iambic pentameter. I think that sounds horrible. Yeah, I don't think I could do that. I don't if, know if it's just Shakespeare. You just throw in a little bit of an accent and throw some words around in the wrong order. It's fine. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. You all should do like a pretty funny like Shakespeare thing. <laughs> Just a, a, a so we do have a we have a Shakespeare game and we'll oh, do, do from modern language. So you're saying something about you know where were you last night? Switch, go to Shakespeare. Thou hast not been here for a fortnight, you know, just changing back and forth. So um, which the audience enjoy because we try to make sense of wherever we're going Shakespearean and then to the modern. Language, the now times. How do you keep track of all those games, all those different things? Doing improv since 2007. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's 99 since I moved here. So wow. I, so, yes. Um, yeah. So how many of you are there in Pretty Funny? There are six of us total. One of us lives in New Orleans. One of us That's is a not long commute. Me. That is, yes. Who lives in New Orleans? <laughs> That's Marion. Oh, I didn't know yes. that. Okay. All right. Have you ha, has have you performed a show in New Orleans? Then we are working on that. So she that would be fun. That is her goal is to get us to New Orleans. When my family was in Texas, and I do still have some family there, the goal was to do a show in Texas. We will be international women of comedy one of these days. I think you darn will. tootin'. I think darn it, tootin'. it started here on this podcast. I mean, you put it yes. out into the universe, so naturally, yeah, it's that's definitely right. I mean, obviously. So, have there been consistent members throughout? The entire, like, since 2007. Have members ever changed? Like, what does that look like? So we've had one member change. Mm -hmm. Um, Life just got a little crazy for her. Um, Nikki DuPont was an original member, and she had to bow out. Um, We didn't know how consistently we wanted to do shows. So at the time, it was a pause. And then we had some show opportunities. So we replaced with Cindy Potasic, okay, who came in. And we always have an open invite to Nikki. She has joined on some random, like if we've gone to do just an improv show for somebody. Um, she is always part of the troupe, just not an active troupe member right now. She came up with our original logo, our stick figures. And we had some posters that will, you know, our you'll laugh your makeup off was our, our line. Nice. That's good. Um, Because we didn't know who we were, who wanted to see us. Who's our audience at first? You know, we're a group of ladies. Women are going to want to see us. Well, now we're really 50-50 because we're not female-focused comedy. We are life-focused comedy by females. Right. And funny is just funny. And funny is just funny. Yes. And we kind of enjoy the opportunity to say, we're all women. This scene needs a guy. I want to play a guy. Yeah, it works. It works. Absolutely. We have fun with it. Yeah. Okay, what was one of your 
most favorite shows that you have ever performed? Oh my since gosh, 2007. Probably one of my very favorite was our very first Christmas show, which was we were at um, the flea market when Comedy City moved to the flea market. We decided to theme a show. And we did everything Christmas, and I love Christmas, so I was so excited. We did a dance. Maybe that was so hard. I can't. <laughs> I wanted to be a dancer so bad. I'm not greatly coordinated. Anissa, who one of our cast members was a cheerleader, she was a dancer, so she'd step up and say, "We're gonna boom, 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 boom this room. Got it? Can you?" You're going to have to break that down. What? You're like 10 steps, please. Yes. Break that down into 10 steps. Oh, it took us forever. So when we finally got it, it was so good. But we got a standing ovation. Like and Everybody just stood. And it was so overwhelming. And it was just so heartwarming of all of our hard work, which we do it because we're having a good time. But then to see other people have as good of time as we're having, that was amazing. That was amazing. Um and so, and I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but Cindy Vitasic will tell you one of her favorite shows is when she did a Christmas show and revealed in the show that she was pregnant and in the middle, it was written into a scene and in the middle of the scene, the audience goes, oh, collective like awes and excitement for her. She's like, that's when I felt like this is family. The people who come to see us, they're not just buying a ticket and sitting in a seat and you just see faces. These are people we know and they love us. And it, uh, it's awesome. Do you find that you get... You kind of get a follow. You build a following. That, yes, that's a lot of the same. Yes, in fact, we we have to find places with more seats. We have such. We'll already have a waiting list. We'll say, I think we're going to do a summer show, so we announce it early, and then we have people say, Will you hold tickets? Like, um, we're really trying not to hold tickets. It's going to be first come, first serve. It gets really hard. So we we're trying to figure out how can we do. We don't want to do so many shows where we're every Friday night. It's you know supply demand. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, how do we get all of our audience in, serve our folks, have a great time, not leave anybody out? It's so hard. It's so hard. I want to go back <laughs> just a little bit because you were talking about you know your favorite performances. Yes. What's that that dopamine hit like? You know, when you know you connect, when you get that raucous laughter or yes. the impromptu standing O. Man, so when you're on stage for me, um, and I'd never heard this line before until I started working with um, this one individual, and she said, sounds like when you're on stage, you're in flow. I was like, in flow. I like that. So you get to such a state where everything is so natural. You know what to say. You can say a line that sets somebody else up for this great comedic moment. Um, and it just, you know, it's, you can't wait to get back out there. So if you leave a scene, you can't wait for the scene to be over to get back out on stage and say, okay, here's our next thing. Here's what we're doing. It, it's so energizing and I'm exhausted. Oh, yeah. Oh, I bet you are. I, yeah. I mean, even just seeing you all up there, I mean, it, you give a lot to your audience. Well, that's physical too. Yeah. Yes. It is. Absolutely. We will sweat. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you know, I just, like, you know, I'm a dumb dumb with a microphone and I get tired doing three of these in a day. I can't imagine like doing an actual show. It's a lot of on a stage, the energy and the physical activity, the focus. And it's, it's like when you host a party. I want to make sure my house is clean, so I spend a lot of energy cleaning. When everybody comes in, I want to make sure they feel welcome. They know everybody. This is a new person to the house. I want to introduce you to everybody. So there's a lot of that energy that also happens. We set it up when we were at Bridge Space, and we made sure that we had our liquor available for our audience. So making sure that the bar was good, everybody in line was good. Like We kept checking in with folks. We're very uh, conscientious <laughs> performers. We will make sure our audience is enjoying every piece of what they're they're in for. It's an experience. And then not to mention when you're on stage, you're just open and raw. And yeah, we are. The doors and are open. The doors open. And we, we will have times. I remember one show, we did a Christmas show. Uh, every show starts with an introduction, a, a brief, hi, my name is Megan. Here's a little bit about me in case you're new to the show. And one Christmas show, we gave sort of an update of our year. And that was the year I had lost my dad. And I had an introduction, and I couldn't say it in rehearsals. I just kept losing it. And the girls were like, you don't have to say it, but you need to say it. Because it was the first show without my dad. And to go up and say, hi, my name's Megan. We've had a lot of things happen. We redid our kitchen. We lost dad. Not in the grocery store. It's not like he's in the aisle and I can't find him. He's just not coming back. And just that bit, and that's all I could say. And I turned around and walked off and I was like, oh my gosh, 
it's and that's when it hits you of how we try to hit the rawness on such high levels and such real levels. We tell ourselves that you can't always be funny, 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 funny. You keep hitting a point where the ceiling is not glass and it's not going to break. It's going to push you back down and you can't keep going funnier. You have to get back to a reality and a realism, not to say that it has to be sad or morose, right? but you have to be real to keep building. Is that realness though that raw is that where the funny really comes from though i mean like you can't just fake funny yes absolutely it's the recognition of the pain of life that we are laughing at together yeah yeah so in the heartbreak the awkward moment of sitting at the bar and seeing the guy that you think is going to come over and ask your name and then you're choking on a peanut and, oh, I look like an idiot. And, you know, that's that humor. But in that moment, you're horrified, you're terrified, you're embarrassed, you're, who am I? You know, but those are moments we all recognize because we've been there in some form or fashion. I actually, it's the opposite where I <laughs> I trip and fall as I'm walking yes. to drink to you and spill the drink <laughs> over me and six other people. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I could see that. I could see. But yeah. That. yeah, and I forget to save you while you're choking. <laughs> yeah. <right>. So <laughs> sorry. Yes. All uh, right. So have you decided when your next show is? We have. I would love to do something before the end of summer, which. You know, how do you define that? I mean, I know there's an actual definition. Sometime in August or like, or even early September, it's fine. It's not officially fall until September 22nd, so you have time. We have time. Not that she has that date memorized. No, I definitely don't. Right. Sometimes it's the 21st, depending (laughs) on the year. Do you have a favorite venue in Lee Summit? Man, we, I did really enjoy Bridge Space. It was great. Um, it's a funky little event space. Like there's, is, a, there's a vibe to it. But it's fun. Yeah, there it's is. It's cool. It's fun. There's um, the bathroom. <laughs> we want parking, bathrooms, and liquor. That's really, you know, we're not yeah, asking a yeah. lot. <laughs> and maybe a backstage if you're lucky. Yes, yes. Well, there's and no backstage at Bridge Space either. There's a, we can put up a little partition so that, ah, yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and Stanley was great too, and they were great to work with. I don't want to think oh, anybody. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but we have had 263 people in there, wow. and it was full. It wow. was full. It was full. Does it improv was really work outdoors? Full. It does not. It is hard because the volume goes out and your energy sort of within the walls, the cozier it is, um, the more fun it is. Like at Westport Coffee House mm-hmm. Theater, it's very cozy. It's very intimate. You feel almost as an audience member that you could be right on stage because you're right there. Uh, so I love the intimacy. A smaller venue is great. We just like to do one and done for a minute. So we want to make sure we have enough seats for everybody. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Well, hopefully you will let us know. I will. Yes. Know as soon I, as your next I one need is it to scheduled, happen. So I mean, can clearly this is all about me. This is not about anyone but me, but I we'll really need that to happen. So if you can make that happen, that'd be great. Thanks so much. We need it too. We need it in our lives. We'll, it's good. We'll get on text streams and say, I miss you. Let's get on stage. Yeah. It's not like it. we want, we love sitting around and having wine or drinks and catching up, but we more love being on stage together. Yeah, it's good stuff. Okay, so let's just say that, you know, people want to know when your next show announcement yes. is. Can they follow you um, on the socials? They can. We are on the Facebook. Uh, translates over also to Instagram. We are getting them hooked up for a little better social acknowledgement between the two. But Facebook is our go-to, and that's where we announce all of our shows. Um, so pretty dot funny dot. Um, I think there's a KC on there for there the actual. Yes. Yeah. Pretty dot funny dot KC. Yes. Mm-hmm. On the Facebook. On the Facebook. On the Instagrams. Yes. Come follow us. Come find us. You can send us a message. When's your next show? Um, yeah. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. And we may do. So a lot of our shows, we do a combination of improv, a combination of sketch comedy. And we said, well, maybe we just put together improv only to get us back on stage faster. Whatever gets you on stage faster. That's what we want. That's what the people demand. That's what. Yes. We the people want comedy. <laughs> Lots of comedy. Yes. And booze and comedy. Like those yes. two things, you just really can't go wrong. 
Parking, booze, comedy. Yeah. And a ride home if you drink too much. Right. right. There you go. We're good. Yes. The, the good Lord invented Uber for a reason. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Or you can be Nick Parker and you live in downtown and <laughs> you just get to <laughs> walk. True. Yes. That's true. Back just, home. Just, just meander my way back home. Megan, thanks so much for coming. Oh my God, on. so great to have Thank you. Thank you for having me. Like, I have a whole other thing I want to do, but, but that would take three more hours. I could <laughs> chat all day, obviously. <laughs> Mike in front of me, I will not stop now. Ah, but thank you so much, and we are all looking forward to the next Pretty Funny Show. Thank you very much. You're all invited. All of Lee Summit. All of Lee Summit. That's going to wrap us up for this week. We'll talk to everybody next time.